Hello again, everybody. This is Robert Sluds coming to you from the Apologetics Corner. We call it now the Catholic Apologetics with RJ. Simple. Robert John. So, John being my middle name. I brought to you a topic that was earlier on prayer and worship. And I really felt like the Lord was calling me to do a second one. Look, I'm doing two in a row, <laughs> whereas uh, it's been about a month and a half since I did any. So I guess we'll leave it to God and the Holy Spirit, huh? And so what I'm going to talk about today is the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Now we all, some of us Catholics know what the Divine Mercy Chaplet is all about. It is, uh, it consists of just rosary beads. Nothing more, nothing elaborate. It's rosary beads. This one happens to be of St. Benedict. It's a beautiful rosary. You can get it on eBay. If you really want to get this kind, I think it's really, really a very, very, very devotional, very meaningful. When you touch it, you you know, your mind focuses. I mean, you can get, still get distractions, but that's what the purpose of the rosary and the beads are. Orthodox use beads as well. Well, let's get started, um, perhaps on the history of this. And I'm going to be a little bit scatterbrained, so I'm going to kind of go back and forth. Um... I have a booklet, just want to show you. You can get this at the Marian Helper Center. Okay, it's called the Divine Mercy. You can get this by calling. I'll give you the phone number right now. 1-800-462-7426. Again, 1-800-462. 7426. You can find these online going www.marian.org. That's www.marian. Period. O R G. Okay. How you doing, Marilyn? Nice to see you. Um, well, we'll start by saying that. In, in about 1932, 1931, maybe a little earlier, there was a there was a nun called Sister Faustina Kowalska from Poland. Yes, my neck of the woods. That's where I was born. Um, but um, I bring this one, this devotion in particular, because. It has spread like wildfire after it was uh, approved, and that was in 1979. Um, all it, its basic premise is that God is mercy. And we have to understand that because we forget oftentimes, you know, we have in our minds. I'm 53. I just turned April Fool's Day. Whoopee. <laughs> um, you know, we think of all things that we've done that weren't so good. Okay, let's be honest. We're human beings. And I think that when Jesus, Jesus appeared to this sister, to this nun, in the mid-1930s, I believe, 1934, Five, something like that, maybe 1936, 1934, somewhere in that era range. I'm not going to give you a bibliography or a biography on this. Um, and he basically told her to spread the message of this, of this chaplet to everyone, to the whole world. And she did. Did it successfully. By God's divine power, not by her own. Um, I want to be able to write in and help people understand how to pr 
pray this this divine mercy chaplet. Now, of course, I pray the rosary. It's easy to follow because, you know, when you're holding a bead in your hand, it's very hard to get distracted. Okay, and we all know what distractions can do to us. If, you know, we go one, two, three, four, and then all of a sudden we're distracted. So what I propose is using a set of beads like, like these. There are actually, there is actually a specific, you know, bead that you can go online. I think I gave you guys the uh, website address, and I'll give it to you again. But the Divine Mercy goes kind of like this, okay? And this is on the ordinary rosary beads. So, you know, we, we bless ourselves. Okay, I'm going to go over this with you. In five, spirit, okay, on the big rosary bead. And on the small rosary beads, you see this, these small, these beads right here? Let me show you. Um, on these beads right here, okay, well, here is, see, in, in, the, in the rosary, there's, there's usually here, there's our Father, then there's, you know, other prayers to go. Um, here we start the prayers um, by basically saying the recitation of this chaplet. And we basically start with the Our Father, okay? So, what we do is, um, and I, you know, everybody does it differently. I'm not going to hear, I'm, this is not a debate, okay? I guess you could do it differently. Um, I, I will say, I will start, you know, by saying um, the divine mercy by starting with this first bead, okay? And I will say, you know, I'll say um, the Our Father, and I'm the same one. I'll say glory, I'll say um, the Hail Mary and the Apostles' Creed. And then I will go and say, on this large bead, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. I know that other people say it on these three beads, okay? So they'll use the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and the Apostles' Creed, okay? I mean, like I said, there's various ways. Then what I would do is I would go into each individual small beads and then say, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Okay? And I would go through here. There's another bead here. Now remember, this, this rosary is meant for hail. You know, rosary. You know, the, the, the four, what, what is it, four mysteries now? So, you know, I'll show you in a moment what an actual divine mercy looks like. Um, I, have, I have one. I just... I didn't whip it out right now because I know people are more familiar with rosaries. So I wanted to show you how to use it. Afterwards, um, what you do is, what you say, heartfully, is you begin with this big centerpiece, okay? To say it's a Benedictine rosary. So on this centerpiece, you say the prayer, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins, and those of the whole world. Okay? That's on the big piece. Then these smaller ones is where you put, you say, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. That's the smaller ones, okay? And then again, you say the same one, Eternal Father, I offer you, you know, on the big one. 
so you keep going, you know, and um, basically when you get to the end, I mean, this is a very quick, you know, I mean, it doesn't take 20 minutes like it does, say, the, the rosary. The rosary, you know, you, you have to say full, you know, longer prayers. Um, when you get towards the end, you say, it's very important, very important. You say at the very end, okay, you get to, you get to the end, you know, you go through a whole round of rosary, you know, the whole, you say, holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. You say it three times. And then you cross yourself with the crucifix. Okay. And you are finished. Shouldn't take you more than five to seven minutes, if that. Um, I, while I gave you the piece how to say it, I want to again, I want to delve a little more deeper into the purpose of this. And that is really to understand the whole devotion to the divine mercy, okay? Um, when Jesus first appeared to Sister Faustina Kowalska, and by the way, personal apparitions, personal devotions, they're not necessary for salvation, okay? Protestants wanted to make sure it's clear they are not necessary for salvation. They are basically what you would call and what I would call devotionals, you know, the use for sanctification, okay? We pray. Remember, we pray, all right? Um, what we want to understand is what did Jesus actually tell Sister Faustina? Right? We want to get to the nitty gritty. I want to show you a book. Huge book. Look at this. I think it's got over 600 pages. I'm not sure. I haven't looked. Huge book. This is called The Diary of Sister Faustine. I'll try to go this way. That'll, the light won't be transparent so much. This book is an attempt by the author, which is Sister Faustina Kowalska, to transcribe simply everything that the Lord Jesus Christ told her to say to people, to everyone. He said to her, please be my secretary. Or actually, he didn't say please. The Lord doesn't say please very often. He says, do it, then you do it. Um, she was a very holy nun. She obviously was very prepared. The Lord called her to the Marian congregation of sisters, I believe at the time. Um, and he then began this whole issue of prophet of telling her that she will be the secretary of his mercy. Um, by saying that, what, what it again is displaying is that God is mercy. Now we wonder in these pictures of, when we see these pictures, you see uh, the red rays and the white rays. The red means the blood that flowed from the side of Jesus on the cross, when he was on the, on the cross. Okay, this is how he appeared to Sister Faustina Kowalska. And then the white rays, the pale rays, are the water that flowed from his side, that purifies mankind. The red is the redemption, the blood. 
right? So that is the meaning of that. And if I'm wrong, I stand corrected. Okay, but that is what I've what I've come to understand. Um, so I went with you along, and I wanted to kind of go over by telling you a little bit about this message. Um, I'm using a booklet because obviously I'm not, you know, fluid into this. Our Lord first appeared to Faustina in 1931. He appeared to her in a vision, clothed in a white garment, and he had his right hand raised in a blessing. His left hand was touching his garment in the area of the heart. And those two rays came forth. One was red, the other pale, white, pale. She gazed intently at the Lord in silence, silencio, okay? Her soul filled with awe, but also with great joy. And this is what Jesus said to her. I'm drinking a little ginger ale. He said, paint an image according to the pattern you see with the signature. Jesus, I trust in you. I promise, now this is Jesus talking, and I'm not, this is not the Bible, okay? I'm not quoting you scripture. I'm giving you what Christ said to a saintly woman who became a nun because of her calling. Jesus speaks to us all the time. Not the same way. Some people audibly, some people inaudibly. Probably, I would say 98%, 99.9% .9 inaudibly, okay? But he does talk to our hearts. If we are open to him, he will talk to us. And you will, you know, we will talk to him. He said, I promise that the soul that will venerate, venerate, again, in the earlier one, we talked about prayer and worship. Well, venerate is, again, honoring, paying homage to this image. He, he will not, he or she will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies already here on earth, especially at the hour of death. Now, we know the value of this chaplet already. I myself, this is Jesus speaking, will defend it as my own glory. I am offering people a vessel with which they are to keep coming for graces to the fountain of mercy. That vessel is this image. Okay? I'm trying to do it in such a way that you can see it. With this, and I said, with this, with this image, that vessel in this image is with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. Now, how Jesus spoke to her, how he told her all this, it's a, probably a good, good a guess as my, as, you know, as anybody else's. But he told her this. He told her this. He said, I desire that this image be venerated first in your chapel. That's where she was. She was in the convent. And then throughout the world, today, every single place of every world, every place in the world, there are this many images. You can see the cultures are so different. It's hard to see because it's a little different. But you can see this one. This one over here looks kind of Byzantine. Um, there's some that are from Europe. You know, others that are from, like this one looks maybe Middle Eastern. 
It doesn't matter what Jesus looks like. People think people have people are stuck on you know how did Jesus look like? Who cares? I don't know how my great 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 grandmother looked like, but I if someone had a picture sketched of her, I wouldn't question it. A woman, okay, she was my great 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 grand grandmother. I think people get too tied down with little minutiae. The fact of the matter is we don't know how Jesus looked like. But he is part and parcel of every of the he loves he loves all the all people, all cultures. He wants to be part of all of us. He wants to be with us. Naturally. That's why we have so many different images portrayed. Now, I could go on and, and tell you that it's very important to say this chaplet. It doesn't matter if you're Protestant or Catholic. I think it's very important to understand it. I pray, for instance, the Orthodox prayer the Eastern Orthodox prayer that uh, on the beads says uh, to the effect, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I, I value it. I think I treasure it. I, it's a beautiful prayer. I think that saying Lord Jesus Christ, you know, as, I, as I mentioned the way it comes from here, specifically it says, you know, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Kind of says it all in a nutshell, right? And then we, you know, look, I believe it came from Jesus himself. I mean, look, I mean, it is what it is. You can take it or leave it. I, I don't care. Uh, I'm here to just share with you so that you know. Because I know you've all seen this image ever, many places. But I want you to come to understand what this really means and what this really says now you know in the scriptures you know we see jesus saying i'm you know remember the woman at caught in adultery she was caught in adultery and what what happened everybody was throwing stones at her the pharisees they wanted to well they didn't throw stones at her they wanted to because that's what moses ordered right but what did Jesus say? Because they, you know, they said, you know, this is what Moses wants us to do. Or with, and then Jesus looked at each one of them, did something kind of writing on the sand. Some say he was writing the sins of all those, <laughs> all those Pharisees. Well, it's very possible. Who knows what he was doing? Um, and then Jesus... Um, appropriately said to the Pharisees, you who are without sin, cast the first stone. And all those stones started dropping. You know how we saw the passion of the Christ. Boop, 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 boop. Now, we get the chance to see Jesus in action. How does he respond to sinful human beings? He didn't die yet. There was no crucifixion. There was no redemption at that moment because Jesus was still on earth. So what? So you know that's interesting. Jesus bent down to that woman, and he said to her, "Woman, get up. Go. Your sins are forgiven." But he didn't stop there. We have a lot of liberals today who will stop there. Oh, hundreds of thousands of liberals. Oh, they're, they're going to focus on Jesus' mercy all, the, all day long. Love. Oh, Jesus is all love. No. Jesus is not all. He's all love, but he's also all justice. He's completely merciful, completely loving, and he's completely just. He can't be untrue to himself. 
I think you could just read the Old Testament and find out. But the Lord wants to save all of us. So he gives us a means to it, all right? Through prophets. Remember in the Old Testament there were prophets? Well, there were prophets today. Sister Faustina Kowalska was that prophet. Now she's not, you know, in a canon of scripture. The public revelations of scripture of Latin ended with the last apostle called John. So this is something that is extra. It's something that we 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 use as Christians, as Catholics, hopefully others will use it. This is how this is her picture, how she looked like. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to um, kind of share with you a little bit so that you kind of understand what this is all about. Um, you know, the whole premise of this booklet is that we learn to seek God's mercy. You know, I, I could be walking down the street and I could simply, I did something, I wanna, I, I always say this and I, and I know I was forgiven. I was forgiven for this. But I was walking one day with friends down Chicago's downtown Gold Coast. I believe it was there, around there viewing all the beauty around the Christmas season at the time. A man approached me and asked me for a single dime. A single dime. I got scared and I turned away and I, I said, I, I don't know. And I left. He turned around and he left. That could have been, Je that was Jesus Christ. Jesus said to all of us, the least you do, <laughs> I'm, I'm going crazy here, confusing. What you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do to me, he said. I failed Jesus Christ then. I love him very much, but I failed him in that action. And he wanted to show it to me. He wanted to use that to show me, to teach me. And I'm not any longer hoping to do that or even attempt to. I had several $20 bills in my pocket. I could have reached out and gave, given the man a $20 bill. I'm sure he needed it a lot more than I did. But I didn't do it. I failed. And I wanted this, I wanted, I felt this was very important to bring up. Very important. Again, I'm going to read you the phone number to get one of these for yourselves. 800 462 7426 If you say you can't afford it, I'm sure they're going to send you a free one. I don't think they're going to give you a hard time. Uh, the Marian, the, the, Website is very simple, www.marian.org, okay? I'll write it down on the post, too. But I want you all to understand the, the level that Christ went to love us and to die for us on the cross. And what did he say to us? What did he say to us about salvation? You know, the Bible tells us that Many things. You see, this is what I want you all to know something. I see, uh, I think uh, Sam Rodman here joined us. Corey Fisher, hello. Margaret, Jackie, hi. Marilyn, hi. I said earlier, uh, I believe Sam is wearing a collar. I don't know what faith he represents. I'm glad he's here with us. Um, I think what we need to understand is that we need to stop reading the New Testament epistles from the perspective of Paul, the Pauline epistles especially, because we can get them all screwed up. And I'm being honest. We need to understand 
Paul, not through Paul, but through Jesus. Paul learned everything about Jesus for what, 40 years? I think I read something like that in Acts. I'm not sure, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not I wouldn't make a good, I wouldn't make a good Baptist. I don't know the Bible as well as I, you know, flipping around and I have one. I have a huge one. I have a, oh my goodness, St. Joseph's edition. They don't come as big as that. <laughs> Pretty heavy. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, we, we need to start to understand that many of us write, like to quote Paul. Oh, yeah, we love to quote him. You know? Oh. Do you know how many religions, how many denominations have been created based on Pauline Verses alone, not chapters. No. No. Romans, Corinthians, Galatians. Oh my gosh, those those could be. I mean, there could be like a, a thousand denominations just on those, you know, disputations alone. What we need to understand, fellow Christians, is that we need to read Paul in light. Of the Gospels. We can't understand Paul, Peter, Timothy, Titus. Did I miss any? <laughs> As a few John. We can't miss, we can't get to those, we can't understand those epistles, those letters unless we understand the Gospels first. Because they can't contradict each other. Jesus isn't going to contradict Paul. And Paul's not going to contradict Jesus. So if we got Paul, if we think we got Paul right, and Jesus says something else, then we're not in the right place, friends. We're just not. No, Jesus very clearly said, I'll take a little more time than I usually do. I usually take half an hour. I think this deserves as long time as it takes. Jesus told Paul, well, Jesus, what am I saying? Jesus was confronted by a young man. Now, don't, don't even tell me what the verse is. You could probably just go put a few words in and you can get the verse easily on Google. But Jesus was confronted. But Paul, I mean, this one man, young man said, you know, Lord, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Friends, what must I do to be saved? Well, except Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior. Those weren't the first words Jesus said. In fact, he never said them at all. Not that that's not true. It's great. It's beautiful. I mean, how, what other relationship can you have? Well, but, but see, Jesus gets to the depth of our souls. He looked at that young man. And I'm just thinking, I'm, you know, I'm observant. And he must have thought, and he, but he was God. He looked at this man and he, wow. You know, he looked at him. Can you imagine a God man looking at this human being asking this question? And I'm, and I, I, you know, I'm thinking Jesus probably just stood there. And you know what he said? He didn't say anything about altar calls. He didn't say anything about, do you know me? Do you want to get to know me? Do you want to have a personal relationship with me? You know, remember faith and work, faith not works. Well, it's actually faith apart from works. I'll do that one another time. I got a few videos you can check out my uh, site on YouTube. I'll, I think I left a few links on my page anyway. But anyway, he said, do you follow the commandments? Look, how is he going to get to know Jesus and all his demands if he doesn't even know the commandments? Folks, seriously, you can't become a mechanic by going to to the back of the book. 
You have to be a, become a mechanic by first there's orientation. Then there's preparation. Then there's getting tools ready. Understanding which of the tools mean what for what. It's more than just, you know, going into the car and starting to poke holes or, you know, you can't get the ASC, whatever that is, uh, the uh, certification for anything. If you go to the back of the aisle, if you go to the, you know, you want to become a doctor, a surgeon, you know, heart surgeon, I had open heart surgery. I wouldn't go to a cardiologist that I, I, there are no cardiologists like that because they thank God that what went to school, uh, you know, by jumping to residency on the last year, last day. That's exactly what many people do today. They think that by reading a little verse of Paul, they know all of scripture. They know everything. No, they don't. So what else did Jesus say? Well, the man answered, well, yeah, I do. I follow all of the commandments. And Jesus said, yes, but one is missing. Well, not really one is missing, but one thing is missing in your life. Because, see, Jesus knows what we need. Jesus knows what is blocking us between that personal relationship. You see, he's getting there. But he's got to start at the, at the beginning. You start at the beginning with everyone. You don't just jump into something that they might have total no clue about. And you try going with a Bible. Try taking this Bible door to door. I did. I did actually. And I got slammed. And it's, hey, I don't mind. You know, people are going to slam the door in my face. Fine, you know. But the point of the matter is you just don't do that. You don't throw Bibles at people. But what I, you know, what did Jesus say? Well, again, to prepare this man, to accept him and his demands. He doesn't want casual observers. You know, football players are not casual observers. They have to go through a lot of training to become, to keep becoming better quarterbacks, better linemen, better linebackers, better offensive, defensive players. You can't sit down and just say, oh, I'm a football player. Well, you know, well, no, that's about purgatory. I'll, I'll leave that for another day. I think I do have that also in my library. I, I will post that on my page later. Um, but what did Jesus, the point is, is that Jesus' mercy is great. He loves us all. But to get to that point, we have to know him, right? We have to, be, we have to ask ourselves, do we follow the commandments? Because the commandments are not burdensome. Do you follow the commandments? Do I follow the commandments? Well, one of them obviously is talks about, do you murder? I know it says thou shalt not kill. But in, in the Hebrew Greek or in the, in the language of the Hebrews, that really means murder. Do we assist at abortions? Do we preach abortions? Do we help people get abortions? What about all those senators who voted for infanticide? Infanticide. Our own country. How do they follow the commandments? I'm not going to judge them, but you figure it out. Well, Jesus then asked this young man, he said, one thing more is necessary of you. 
pay everything that you own, you know, give everything that you have and give it to the poor. Doesn't mean that everybody is called to do that, but he was. But he was, he had too many things. So Jesus couldn't go further because it was useless. Maybe that young man would you know, come back to his senses and come to know Jesus down the road, but what, what's the point of Jesus telling him, you know, say the altar, altar call or say this and that, and then, and, and then him ending up being like a Jim Jones down the road. Jim Jones was ordained. He was a minister of God, like this minister here I see. And I'm sure all the people, all the, pre, all the ministers went to his method. He was a United Methodist minister. I'm sure they all went to his ordination, knowing he was saved. Why would he not be? And then he murders, what, over nine, over almost a thousand people three years later. I keep bringing these subjects up because I think you folks sometimes don't get it. Love it. God is not love e dovey. He expects. He has high expectations, high demands, very high demands. In fact, Jesus said, well, anyway, just to finish the story, you probably know the man turned away and left sad because he had many things. Well, I didn't finish the story about the woman and the, I think with the stone throwing, you know, uh, well, the whole thing with that was very simple. I mean, it, it shows how, what Jesus said. Jesus didn't just say, well, your sins are forgiven. Oh, that's not all he said. He gave a caveat to that. Do you, do you all know what that caveat is? Father Sam Rodman, do you know the caveat? Go, but sin this sin no more. Now, you know, when I go to confession, I'm told, you know, your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Thank you. I'm grateful to God for that opportunity. But I'm a weak man. I'll commit. I'm trying, you know, I work hard to avoid those sins. Yeah, you know, so I know. I know. I use the word work, and I know that's not doesn't go well with some Protestants. But that's <laughs> you know they, they just love to attach themselves sometimes to certain words. And I'm sorry, I'm not being you know mean, but to some, I'm just saying some. No, you know, no. <sighs> A little ginger ale there. So Jesus wants us to come to him. He wants to absolve us, but he also wants to tell us, hey, what did he say again in the Gospels? Because I'm not going to go into the epistles unless I know the Gospels. What's the purpose? What is the purpose of me going to the epistles if I have no clue about the Gospels? Answer me that question. What is the purpose? Other than the fact that Paul liked to write to certain churches about certain issues that they did, that they had. So, what did Jesus also say very clearly? And this will be the final point before I kind of finish up with this. Um, Jesus said, the servant is not greater than his master. Think about that. The servant is not greater than his master. I know he called him, you know, the friends afterward, you know, but, but that's already with the understanding of who they knew they were. They were servants. They were to serve. You know, we gave them the whole water deal and treatment. You know, you're, you know, I'm, I'm lowly. I'm, a, I'm I've been a servant among you. Yeah, yeah, we're, you're my friend, but 
yeah, let's let's go first to the servanthood. So then what what happened after that? Now let me ask you a question. What did Jesus, the master, go through? Because he says the servant is not greater than the master. So what did the master do? Well, first he taught for three years. Second, he was thrown out of the his own church, you could say his own temple. People were throw, about to throw rocks and throw them over a cliff, walked right through them, because he was God. He could do that. Maybe he paralyzed them with fear. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Third, he had to be rejected. Remember in John, read John 6. Read that whole chapter. It's a huge chapter. You know, he tells everybody, I am the bread of life. The bread I will give is my flesh. He doesn't say it's a symbol of my flesh. I always have to say that because people, you know. He doesn't say it's a consubstantive part of my flesh. It's, you know, the bread. He doesn't get into all that. He just says, this, you know, unless you eat of my flesh, you shall have no life in you, period. Exclamation point. Nope. Nothing to talk about. Just, Jesus wasn't a very difficult person. He was talking about maybe about 70,000, crowd of 70,000. What did he tell them? He kept going over and over the same thing every time. They, and they said, you know, like, look, I mean, these were Jews. Jews knew what the Seder was, the Passover meal. It was symbolic. It was very, it was very symbolic. No one actually believed that the lamb was God, that they ate. It was a symbolic meal. Everything, everything meant something. The spices, the wine, the preparation, everything. But they asked him, who are you meaning to give us your flesh to eat? They were already thinking physically on the natural side. You see, they were already thinking naturally, not spiritually. That's where the last part of that verse comes from, saying the flesh is of no avail. It is the spirit that gives life. That is what Jesus meant to say. Not that what he was talking about was figurative. Try to understand that, you know. It's just one after the other. We try to understand, and we, we look at the early fathers of the church. Can't forget that. You know, I can go, I can go 1,500 years into the future. Look at Calvin's Wingley, Moody, all those men who just love to open up the Bible and, you know, go at it. From Paul, what do you think, you know, Luther started he started with romans right he, i don't know if he you know even thought about the gospels or what jesus had to say but i'm sure that he was respectful i'm i love all Lutherans. i went i i've gone to a very i've gone to one uh, missouri synod lutheran church and spoke to a pastor you know very casually he was a very nice cordial man actually i have to th i have to thank him yeah i don't know if he's listening right now but his his parish looked a lot a lot a lot beautiful ornate a lot more emphasis on the eucharist a lot more just beauty than the catholic church next door to him being honest as a catholic i'm being honest anyway that's why this is so important visualization is very important without visualization we can't really know you know, we can't get in touch with Jesus, you know? Okay. So he's, so Jesus says, says, so again, you know, the master, the servant can't be greater than the master. What else did the master do? The master had a Passover meal. Well, anyway, I just wanted to say the point that here he's, he was rejected. He was talking to this group of 70,000 people or so. 
they knew what he was talking about. Trust me, they knew he was talking literally. And we're not, you know, these were real, these were real Jews. Very, very thoroughly understood what the Seder meant, what the Passover meant. Please don't tell me otherwise. They knew exactly what he was talking about. And he went over and over about it. Well, what basically happened is that he, uh, he had to say that, um, you know, well, they all left, actually. I mean, there's not much to say. But then at the end of the scriptures, what I mean, at the end of that chapter, it says, it's almost like Jesus is saying, you know, look, you know, that's the flesh is of no avail. It is a spirit. It is a spirit that gives power or something like that. Jesus wasn't talking about what he was talking about earlier. He was talking about the fact that these people left because they couldn't, they were in the natural sphere. They weren't living in the supernatural sphere. See, we have to come to understand Jesus Christ in a relationship that is supernatural. It doesn't matter if we're listening just naturally. I don't care about natural. Jesus didn't want natural. That's the whole point of what he was saying at the end. It is a spirit that gives life. The flesh is of no avail. Meaning that if you understand Jesus Christ in the flesh, in the natural sphere, like many of my bishops and priests, and even the Pope sometimes does. Um, you know, for whatever reason, I'm not going to criticize anybody. I'm just going to be honest. And I dare some Protestants to be honest about themselves. I have yet to find some. So it's, that, it's what it is. You know, I mean, look, you know. Jesus turned to his apostles and said, well, do you want to leave me too? Jesus was willing to leave, to allow his apostles to leave him for the Eucharist, the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing else included. Okay, you know how they say in the stores, you know, you get this, but it's not included with that. Okay, this is nothing else included. Okay, this is it. So, what did Peter had? What 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 happened? Peter said, "Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life." Now that's thinking supernaturally. <coughs> Excuse me. He learned something. Peter wasn't always, you know, a fast learner, but he did learn something. And so what I'm trying to say to you on the radio, I'm on the radio right now. And so what I'm saying is that there are certain things that we cannot understand by just reading the epistles. So... You can have whatever you want. Um, so I just wanted to say that, um, that was my niece, by the way. But anyway, I wanted to just say that that is really what our understanding is. Jesus is mercy, but he expects mercy. See, when, I, when that man came to me and asked me for a dime in downtown when I was 27 years old or 29 or 30, and I was with friends, and I gave him nothing. I was not giving back mercy. Jesus will give us mercy. He gives us mercy. But in this, he expects us to give mercy back. Yeah, you could say conditions. Yeah, there are conditions. Always conditions. But the conditions are 
love. Love for love. Not, you know, I got to do something for someone. Otherwise, if I don't do it, then I'm not going to get to heaven. That's not the point here. That's not what I'm talking about. It's that Jesus first loved me. God loved me first. But I got to bring that love to others. If I don't bring that love to others, who gives a darn what it, what it all means? I mean, if I go to heaven, you know, if I meet St. Peter up there, and I have nothing to show for it, I don't know what he's going to tell me, to be honest with you. That's why I really appreciate Paul Diamond. He is one of our Baptist ministers uh, in our forum, and I've known him for many years. I disagree with him on a few things. <laughs> but he does a lot of gospel preaching, teaching on the sidewalks with his with his parish. I see it on his board. It's beautiful. He gives love for love. And he probably doesn't even know it. But he does. He gives that. You see? No greater love hath these that one gives his life for his friends. No one has greater love than these than to pass on the word of God to strangers that will mock you. I bet you I will lose a bunch of friends on my page today. I'm sure I will. But that's okay. I'd rather be in heaven than in hell. I, you know, I'm 53 years old. Just turn April 1st. How long do I got? 5, 10, 15, 20, maybe 30 years if I'm if God God willing. I don't know. 30 years have passed. 53 years have passed. How quickly time goes. So anyway, I'm going to lock up now. Jeez, I'm 57 minutes. You, you, you'll be mad at me. Um, please get this booklet. Please. And understand that you're going to under. You're going to. It, it, this is a. This is a big. It's a presentation. This is more of a presentation. Okay. This tells you a few words of Jesus, what he said. It gives you the novena chaplet that I told you about. I didn't tell you about another novena. This novena begins on Good Friday. Actually, I'm sorry. I, I want to make sure, okay? Um, Oh, boy, such is life when you don't go through these things, huh? Let me see here. Okay, so th there's a novena that starts on Good Friday. It is once a year. It's only once a year. Starts on Good Friday and ends on the Feast of Divine Mercy, St. John Paul II the Great initiated this feast. This is the feast that that Jesus himself desired when you read more when you read this book, I'm sorry to say, you know, but you know, if you want these short ones, I think you'll get the you get you get the you know the gist. Um so basically it goes like this. Okay, I you know, maybe some Protestants might not like all of these. This is what Jesus had to say to this nun, so you can take it or leave it. It's not a big deal. I mean, I, I recognize all my friends who are Protestants as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. I hope that someday all of them can return the favor to me. So on the first day, Jesus says, today bring me all mankind, especially all sinners. And there are specific prayers. Again, 
this nun was a secretary. That's what Jesus called her, the secretary of my mercy. He didn't want us to miss anything when he gave this to her. Second day, the souls of priests and religious. Boy, do we need that ever and ever. I would even include the Pope. Honestly, I would. I, Cardinal, everyone, Pope. I'm sure it includes everybody because the Pope is a priest. So, But, uh, yeah, I would include everybody here in this case, obviously. And then the third day, all devout and faithful souls. Fourth day, those who do not believe in God and those who do not yet know Jesus, know me. Fifth day, the souls of those who have separated themselves from my church. Sorry to say, but in history, in Catholicism, there have been many breaches. You have to be honest about it. We can't lie. So, you know, we there were there have been many people that, you know. If it's not in the Bible, I'm not going to be there. And I usually tell them, where do you think you're going to go? Where are you going to go? Okay, in the Catholic Church, we have some pedophile priests. We have bad po popes. We have bad bishops, bad cardinals. Wonderful, great, horrible. Where are you going to go? Where do you think you're going to go? to get him. Think about it. To get the bread of life from the mass, in the Eucharist. Where are you going to go? You're going to go to Good Book Baptist? What if two years from now, someone else changes uh, and puts up, up a rainbow flag? Where are you going to go then? You're going to go to United Methodist down the other corner? They are. They have already done that. It's most of them, anyway. I'm sorry. Sorry, this is reality, you know? We Catholics are oftentimes the targets. Why don't you look up www.reformation.com? Look it up for yourselves. Take a good, good observation. And think about it for yourselves. Before you start judging others, look at all that place and think to yourself, you know what? I can go to mass in the Catholic Church anywhere in the world. And I know that they will teach. Hope I can grab this without everything falling here. You know how I am. I don't... Well, I think Tricia will tell you I'm not a very good uh, keeper of uh, things. Where are you going to get the catech? Where are you going to get the truth? Where are you going to get the the all the teachings of the Catholic Church from the very beginning? Where are you going to get it? Well, you're going to miss a few. You know that. There's no veneration of Mary in many Protestant churches. There's certainly no Eucharistic. Um, validity. There's. I'm going to be. I'm going to be charitable here and say that people in Episcopalian churches, who many earlier on changed ordination rites and situations, and that's what kind of threw that off the pedals. So where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? You know, when I go to Mass, I don't care what the, I don't care about the priest in the altar. I don't even care what he has to say. I go to Mass because of him. That's why you should go to your service, wherever it is. I don't care. I don't, I don't give a fig leaf about the bishops, the Pope. Oh, I, I pray for them. I love them. I mean, I honor them. 
But I don't care what they have to say when they say something that is against the truth of what the church has always taught and is still teaching in many holy priests and bishops, cardinals, and sometimes occasionally we get a, rap, a pretty, you know, so-so pope. If we're lucky, you know, we get a St. John Paul to the great, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> um, we got that unity, the sign of unity, and that's the whole point of it. So, what what am I miss saying today? I talking for an hour and a five minutes, and I'm supposed to be talking for twenty or thirty. Um. Uh, anyway, did I finish this? So basically, you go through this ver this devotions um for eight days. From Good Friday to Sunday, the Feast of Divine Mercy, which is the Sunday after Easter. Okay, you say these prayers, and unfortunately, you're, you're going to find these prayers in this booklet only. Okay, I wish I could do it so that the light doesn't shine on it so much, but maybe I could. Yeah, I could, maybe I could tip this light out a little bit. Oh, I hate this. I got to figure something about my sound room. Um, anyway, you kind of get, the, it's basically the divine mercy, just ask for the divine mercy message and devotion is at the bottom. And again, I'll leave you the, I'll leave the phone number and the website on my post. Folks, Jesus Christ is the one we should seek. He's the head of the church. We need to seek him, and we need to seek him with a merciful heart. And we need to pray together. We need to ask people from other denominations, other churches, to come and pray with us. We need to reach out. We need to understand that we don't hold all the truth. We have a fullness of faith that we believe, but we don't have we don't have what's called um, absolute truth of everything. Heck, I hate to say it because I'm going to lose another few buddies, but even Buddhists and Hindus have some truth, be it one half of one percent, but they have it. You know, they get together. They, pray hopefully sometime you'll know, pray to Jesus Christ to God right so um, I want to leave you with that I encourage you to get this diary I know it's I know you guys don't like to read I you can get you can get it cheaper on Kindle and Amazon this is a diary written specifically and only by this nun, St. Faustina Kowalska. Polish, just like me. How about it? I come from a good breed. So anyway, I want to thank you all. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the postings. And I'm just grateful for all of these viewers and watchers. Now, I also put up YouTube of this program so i hope that all the likes that you guys put you can go to my youtube and subscribe and maybe you know when this turns into youtube you guys can put all those likes and transfer from there kind of helps me out a little bit but thank you very much god bless you hope i didn't stop but remember i'll finish with this read the gospels Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, especially what Jesus says, because he doesn't mince words. And when someone comes to you and tells you what you should believe, you'll know better to tell them, sorry, that's not what Jesus said. I don't care what Paul said because you're misunderstanding Paul. You're quoting Paul because it's convenient for you to quote Paul. 
I'm going to talk about the Bible again. I, I had, I have a, if you, if you join my subscription, you'll see that I have a Bible alone in there as well. It's not probably as clear. Remember, I've done a few of these. So I'm just, I started last year. Slowly, I'm getting a little better, but. It just takes a little time for everybody to wet their feet and get start swimming, right? So I wish you all well. Have a very nice weekend, as I said in the uh, earlier um, uh, thread or video posting on prayer and worship. What's the difference? But please, my friends, don't leave the Catholic Church because someone sinned because this pope says that because this bishop does that you know you know the best way you know what i've learned to do you love this you know what i do when i go to mass i just don't give any money to the archdiocese i just don't and you know what i tweet i tweet boycott liberal archdioceses oh you'll get there i usually believe me if you don't think you're going to make an effect, that's the way to make an effect. Because if one person stops giving $20 and makes that a thousand people, you do the math. Okay? Let them close the churches down. You know what? That just makes them look bad. All right? Nothing. Look, Jesus is the head of the church. not the pope the pope is the visible head he's only a temporary prime minister as you can go into isaiah 22 or 21 i believe but jesus is gonna come back for those keys he's gonna say come on buddy let me have those keys back why don't you look at revelations one and two and you'll know for yourself Jesus holds the keys in the end. But the church he left behind to the Catholic Church. All the fullness is there. If I took all the Protestants, Anglicans, Presbyterians, Baptists, uh, Orthodox, if I took them all together, I'd have the Catholic Church. Think about it, my friends. I know that's a lot to talk about. But then again, I really encourage you, use this rosary. Beautiful rosary. In fact, I gave Trisha an even beautiful one because I think she loves it even more. Read, pray this rosary. And don't be afraid that it's too long. Just think of it as Christ having to die on this cross so that you can love him and pray a rosary that's only 20 minutes. Remember what he said to his apostles at the agony in the garden? Won't well, you stay at least an hour in prayer with me? Now, having said that, I think you get it. I think you do. But I did, but, you know, do, saying the chaplet, like I said, it's five to six minutes. It doesn't take that long to say it. It's a very short uh, way to you say it on it. And like I said, get the booklet. I'll post everything uh, below and help you folks get it and enjoy it and enjoy the relationship with Jesus. Because you can't enjoy a relationship with Jesus if you're living with someone out of wedlock. You can't, you can't enjoy, you can't have a personal relationship with Jesus unless you're first following the commandments of Jesus, of God. You can't. It's impossible. You can't love God unless you love your neighbor. And I failed one time. I told you folks, remember, failed to give a man a dime on the street and I had, I had 
probably about six or seven or five twenty dollar bills i could have given him a 20 in a heartbeat i wouldn't even have missed it and i let him go and that is my that was my sin until it was forgiven so with that i ask you all to think about everything that was said here and please call call the marion helper center www.marion.org be more than happy to uh, get you this little booklet and maybe you can pick up a rosary and if you don't have enough money maybe uh, look if you don't have enough money just ask me I'll help you all right I'm gonna help you get what you need to start praying the Divine Mercy Chaplain how's that is that a deal all right so there's nobody saying oh you know what I don't have any money Okay, so if you need money, I'll get you what you need to start praying the Divine Mercy Chapel. With that, I'll say, have a nice weekend. God bless you. Thank you for listening.